The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Straight ahead on this edition of Perspective, she had her first national top chart song in 1967 with her version of Respect. She later goes on to have 77 100 chart entries and earned 18 out of 44 Grammy nominations. And guess what? In 1987, she became the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, I am talking about the late Queen of Soul, Miss Aretha Franklin. Stay with us here on Perspectives as we talk about her legacy from someone who knew her and had also had a chance to work with her. Plus, we're going to get those questions asked and answered. Some of those behind-the-scenes questions that so many of you have been talking about, about her wonderful homegoing celebration that is not without controversy. That's coming up next on Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make your move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just keep on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. What's your perspective? what's in your heart and your mind. Share your perspective. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we invite you to stay connected to us here on Perspectives. How do you do that? Well, you can stay connected every week here with us on BronxNet's Channel 67. Check us out on the web at BronxNet.org. And uh, always, you can hit me up on social media. My professional page is Darren C. Hyman. There you can get your own uh, inspiration and perspective there. And we say, hey, you never know. If you share your perspective, it just might make it right here on this show. But coming up on today's show... The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, she was loved by many. She was talented, inspirational. She shaped many of the greatest singers, including the late Whitney Houston. She had 77 Hot 100 chart entries, earned 18 out of 44 Grammy nominations, and yes, the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Queen of Soul, Miss Aretha Franklin. My next guest is no stranger. He has two Emmy Awards and eight nominations for producing McDonald's Gospel Fest, but he's also responsible for organizing, planning, and executing the homegoing services for the late Whitney Houston, and most recently he was tasked with producing and coordinating the funeral service ceremony for the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Joining me now to tell us a little bit more about what happened on that day is the famed A. Curtis Farrell, my friend and brother. <laughs> hey. How are What's you, up, man? man? I'm good. And you? All is well? All is well. I asked you off camera, but I'm asking you, are you rested? I'm not rested, but I'm good. <laughs> you're, you're good. You're good. Yeah, Talk gotta, to me gotta about... Keep, gotta keep going. I tell everybody I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a national hero. Yes. They call me the activator, and I have a big A on... <laughs> <laughs> gotta, keep it, gotta keep it going. Gotta keep it going. How do you, how do you feel now, looking back at... Aretha's funeral, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously it was long, mm -hmm. controversial, mm -hmm. but yet and still, your thoughts about mm -hmm. the whole ceremony? Well, um, uh, uh, three things. One, um, it was, it, some people say it was long, but the truth is, if we're honest with ourselves, it was the black church. Mm -hmm. And if you really know anything about the black church, we're in church. Right. And we're in church until we get done. Uh, you know, and so I say to everybody, and if I can think of any artist outside of Stevie Wonder who's more deserving of eight hours, it really wasn't eight hours, but they're saying eight hours, mm -hmm. um, it's Aretha Franklin. So I, that to me is not as controversial. And the other thing is, is that for me, uh, you know, when I, I think back of the services, for me, you know, it's just, we, it was in a church. And I think that that's what people miss. Mm -hmm. That Aretha, at the end of the day, is a, was a child of God. And her family was determined that the services were in a church. And I think people miss, they really miss the message. Right. And the message has nothing to do with any of the singing. It doesn't even have to do with the eulogy. It has to do with where we were. Mm -hmm. We were inside a church. It could have been at the biggest arena in Detroit, and it would have been 
packed. Right. But we were in a church. And it's the same thing with Whitney. Whitney's uh, services, Sissy was determined it's going to be in the church. So it really, if people look at it from a historical standpoint, even all of the artists that you see, most of them came from out of the church. Mm -hmm. And at some time, at some time in their life, they come back to us. Right. And um, her home going was exactly that. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful to God. Uh, I had a... Um, I think it was either the New Yorker or Entertainment Tonight, one of those shows that I was on, they said to me, what was it like to be a part of history twice? And, you know, I said to them, I said, you know what? God just gave me a um, work to do. Mm -hmm. And I said to my staff and everyone else, I said, this is an assignment. Right. And we're going to do our assignment. And, th and for me, I just wanted the Holy Spirit to be present. And I know that the Holy Spirit was present. That was what my goal, my number one goal was. Let me uh, walk through a couple of aspects of the service. First sure. thing that uh, you know we want to talk about is uh, we'll talk about Ariana Grande. Okay. Uh, her performance. Yes. Uh, a lot of people were taken aback by the clothing that she wore. Yes. Uh, did she get any briefing that she was coming to a funeral? Oh, yeah. No, she knew she was coming to a funeral. She knew she was coming to a church. Um, you know... I think it's you got to look at it in two different ways. One, as those of us who are in the church, we are very specific about clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I had somebody dying laughing because I said to them the other day, I said, they better be glad that I didn't have the mothers there because if the mothers of the church would have been there, they would have had that white lap, yeah, lap you scarf, know, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, the lap scarf. Yeah, they would have definitely placed it over her mm -hmm. because it was very uh, revealing. But the other part of that is, we also have gotten so stuck in the church that um, uh, the reason we don't have a lot of young people mm -hmm. continuing to keep the churches growing is because we concentrate so much on the clothing. And she's of that generation where I don't know that they really care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. About the clothing. And so, um, and, you know, all of her fans, they loved it. Mm -hmm. Her fans, they loved it. And that's not my age group, but... They loved it, but... You had a wider audience that said, what is she wearing? Right. What is she doing? Right, right. Is, is, it, is it inappropriate? For, right. Was it inappropriate for the church? You know, as a church church boy, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But as someone who also knows the way everything works with from generation to generation to generation, you know, she was, she was herself. Mm -hmm. Bishop Charles Ellis got some controversy. He did, and I, I feel so bad about that because he is such... A nice man, and he did so much work to make sure everything went smooth. So here's the here's the church thing, right? Bishop Ella. So when she came out, right, and this is my take, or uh, this is my take as right. the producer. This is my take. When she came out, you know, you you know uh, what, what it's like in the black church. When when she came out with that short, short, short dress, you could hear the everybody in the room just go. <gasps> mm -hmm. And all of the pastors, all of the all of the pastors and stuff on stage, I'm sure they felt uncomfortable. And if you look at it, they don't know where to look. Mm -hmm. They don't know whether to look at her, to look away. Their eyes are all over the place. But a big part of it really um, has to do with that. After she was finished, he, as a pastor, he just wanted to make her feel good. So that's why he called her back. To like try to keep it going, you know, saying, "Hey, you know, my kids," da, 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 which was a bad joke, mm -hmm. um, and um, that's how that whole thing happened. But he was not trying to do anything to her in front of millions. I mean, not even millions. I mean, millions and millions and millions and millions of people. That it just, you know, he 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 was nervous too, and I think he was just trying to take the um, uh, the. Sting out of it. Yeah, the sting out of out of the experience. The experience. Let me walk you over to uh, Bishop. But Jasper. he's a nice guy, oh, well, and I, I he was yeah. so helpful. He couldn't be more helpful. He gave me oh, his whole staff the mm -hmm. week before, and I mean his entire staff. Just work with with Curtis. Whatever he says goes. Um, nice, nice man. Just wanted everything to be perfect. And you know, sometimes we we get we just get. I, he just got caught out there. But I, I promise anyone listening, I know that little clip looks different than what it really was, but I promise you he's a good man. Mm -hmm.
Bishop Jasper Williams, a lot of people in the African American yeah. community are upset. According to Aretha's family, they're upset yes, about the eulogy that is given. Are, are they upset? They're very, they are, yes, they uh -huh. are. They are. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the truth is, is that um, Stevie, the first thing that Stevie said was, black lives do matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that once he went into black lives don't matter, that became so controversial. And just, it really was not, and this is my own take, it really was not about Aretha. The, I mean, if you look at the eulogy, the eulogy really was nothing, in my view, about Aretha. Um, the family has you there, and you know, on a global stage, mm -hmm. the family has you there to eulogize the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin, Amazing Grace, number one gospel selling album, still the number one live album, period. Mm -hmm. There's so many things, I, you know what I mean? I'm not a preacher and I could eulogize her. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it was just not the moment for that particular message. It was definitely not the moment <clears throat> that I think the choice uh, at that moment to make that uh, be about um, your own maybe political take that really truthfully was much more conservative than the audience there mm -hmm. and obviously triple 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 conservative for the broader public. Has he been in contact with the family since? Um, my understanding is that the family the family originally didn't want to make a statement I'll be honest with you mm -hmm. the family is so sweet they are the sweetest I mean they are so sweet and um, but once it just became more and more and once he did his interview then the family was like okay we have to say something right. and so the family said something but they're not that kind of family they're but they haven't a, spoken to each other yet that, that, from my understanding I don't know uh -huh. I really I shouldn't because right. I don't I right. don't know right. I know when I last talked they hadn't but mm -hmm. but okay that's where that well is. let's take a quick break come back okay. and talk a little bit more about it okay all right we'll be back with more a Curtis Farrell producer and coordinator of Aretha Franklin's uh, homegoing service, probably the largest uh, funeral service to ever be watched on television. We'll talk Definitely. about more in just a minute. make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those. Vouchers, I got us bumped. They were like, oh, but now they're like, <laughs> aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Our neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. And we are back here on Perspectives. Our guest, A. Curtis Farrell, producer and coordinator for Aretha Franklin's homegoing celebration, and we got a chance to see it on a national stage. The whole world had an opportunity to see it on a national stage. We're just trying to get some of the background facts to what people are talking about today. What's the question that people ask you the most out of, uh, out of this? Um, the 
The question that I get the most is, I would, well, the question I get the most, the, the most is what is it about black families in the black church doing open casket? Mm. That's the number one question I get around the world. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that's the number one question I get. Well, we'll and, talk, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and I just, I, I find it to be um, funny in one way, but mm -hmm. the, other, the other thing, you know, I'm, I'm just so used to church that it, you don't even notice those kinds of things. It doesn't seem odd to me mm -hmm. because it's just so comfortable because that's what it's been all my life. But, um, yeah, you know, the black church is, um, the tradition is open caskets. More and more now you see some closed caskets and even cremation. Mm -hmm. But at one point it was blaspheming to do cremation. Right. You know what I mean in the black church. And um, so I think that the question I get the most has to do with that and um, how, how that is a, how it's a big deal. And, and everybody was just so comfortable. Right. And I said, no, all those people were comfortable because they're used to it. Right. You know. And, and walk us through this here because right. Aretha was buried uh, well, I should well, say she was, uh, she was funeral, right, right in tomb. Yeah. But at the same time, while she was in tomb, let's talk about the visiting, the the the, the actual. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, the three. The, the it three, was a whole yeah, three day. Services, it was a right? week. It was a week. No, it was more than that. There was a whole week of activity. So on that Tuesday and Wednesday, she lied and stayed at the African American Museum in Detroit um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. There were thousands and thousands and thousands. The lines were incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and the first day. Um, was the day um, that the f that um, it was just amazing how uh, it became. We knew then that this was bigger than um, probably anything else that we we could possibly do at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, e even the John McCain passing away. Uh, I thought that would take a little bit of the bite off of the Aretha, and it took nothing off of it. And and I, I think I forgot that, you know, the politicians that we know here, they're mm -hmm. all national. Right. But Aretha is global. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, she's known around the world. Be wow. You know what I'm saying? And so, mm -hmm. therefore, we had, we probably had a close to 1,500 uh, different organizations that came from around the world just to cover it. Mm -hmm. That's that's not including the national coverage. But she didn't wear the same clothes every no, day. No, it's changed. You know, come on, that's, that's black <laughs> church too. It's, uh, it's like anything else. No, each day was a different uh, different dress. She now, did she have this laid out in herself? Did she, or just the, oh, the no, family? Oh, no, 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 the, no. No, this was all um, definitely the family and the funeral home director, and they did a wonderful job. Linda and the group there, they did a great job. Yeah, and, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to show some pictures. We got some pictures okay. of uh, some people and uh, get your That's, thoughts and, okay. and your feedback on some of the things that we're going right. to see. And, yeah. uh, that, here we go right that, here. That, and that, we've that. got a, uh, I need it on the this other screen. Give so I can you watch. my perspective. There you go. <laughs> okay, there it is. And uh, here we have Jesse Jackson and uh, oh, yeah. Stevie Wonder. Yeah, yeah, Jesse Jackson, Stevie Wonder. Of course, you know, Stevie is Stevie. Right. You know, you can't beat Stevie and that harmonica and. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And, you know, I think the thing that people also miss, that you had the world's greatest civil rights leaders all mm -hmm. there. And we see the Reverend yeah, Al Sharpton. you mm -hmm. see Reverend Al Sharpton, um, of course, Minister Farrakhan. Um, you, ha you really had all of them there. Now, uh, yeah, me, you brought up Mr. Farrakhan. I got to yeah. ask a question. Yes. A lot of controversy was around that. He was sitting. He was sitting <laughs> in the pulpit yes. of a Christian church. They yeah. said one. Number two, other people said, "Hey, here you have Mr. Farrakhan. He wasn't allowed to speak. That's a that's, great disrespect." That's, to that's not. That's not even what happened. And and people get so involved. It's so funny because they're not in the know. Right. They don't really know. Minister Farrakhan. We got their their confirmation that they were coming, um, the day before. Mm -hmm. Um, their security came and everything. He was not on the program, and he came to pay his respects because of his relationship with Aretha. So we thought it not robbery that this great man, why would we have him sit in the audience? So we gave him a seat of prominence, which is what you do in the black church, is that if it's somebody of prominence, you have them sit on the pulpit. So we sit him in a seat of prominence. You know, he's Minister Farrakhan. And that's what he did. And he was there for the whole service. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, people are, right. especially online, digital, print has been social. just the total opposite. Social media, social media doesn't operate without a negative. Right. 
I tell people that a negative equals a negative equals a negative. That's social media. You never hear anything really good on social media. And once you do hear something good, I promise you, it will only be good for two minutes before people make it into a negative. And I don't even know where people even got that from because it was never, the, relief, the program was released. We released a program two days before mm -hmm. the services. Minister Farrakhan's name was not on there. So I don't even know where people got that from. But we, trust me, we treated Minister Farrakhan with all of the respect um, that he so rightfully deserves, and um, that's it. It yeah. was no controversy. Well, it, it, it's <laughs> for you, going back, I mean, right. you, you talk about the coordination of it. Right. And first of all, we will give you all the props that you can get Thanks. for putting together this and coordinating this, because you did this for Whitney, and right. the world got to see it. Yes. You do this for Aretha, right. and, the world, yes. and the world gets to see it. Yeah. And even the New Yorker has something to say about the organization. Yeah, they said it was spectacularly organized, because it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Even for eight hours, it's a lot, you know, and I think people don't understand you're dealing with every security team. All of those people have their own security. You're dealing with that. You, with the president there, we were dealing with the Secret Service. Um, you know, we were dealing with the state and, and the governor and the mayor of Detroit. They couldn't have been more helpful. The police gave us everything. We even at one point had to call the state police. They were there like that, called the governor and said, we need the state police. The state police, was they were everywhere. People don't understand all of what Absolutely. really goes in it. And people even say to me, how do you produce a funeral? Why would you? And I'm saying, until you know and you've done it, you have no clue. Right. My life was on hold through that whole process because the whole world comes upon you mm. during that time. I mean, with Whitney's, it was the exact same thing. Well, you know, here's the irony before we go to break. Right. I remember giving you a phone call. I don't know if you right. remember this. Yes. I called you and said, hey, and uh, I said, have they called you for a read this funeral? He's like, no, I not know. yet. Oh, like, yeah. life was, like, life like was no good. good. Yeah. And then yeah. he said, what, yeah. right, after I, right after we hung no, up the no. phone? Yes, yes. And, and you get I, the thought call. People, I thought people, and a lot of people, including other people downtown, other stations and stuff, they were like, we thought you weren't involved. I said, I wasn't. It happened like that. Right. The call came. I got on the plane and I was there. Well, yeah. Everybody watched Aretha Franklin's funeral, and if yeah. you didn't, uh, you certainly missed a piece of history. Going to come yeah. back more with A. Curtis Farrell, who is the producer, the coordinator of not just Aretha Franklin's funeral, but also Whitney Houston's funeral. Going to get a chance to talk to him a little bit about the "quote unquote" black church and yes. it being on stage because this is what yes. exactly happened yes. uh, at Aretha's funeral. We'll be right back. And we're back here with A. Curtis Farrow, producer and coordinator for Aretha Franklin's funeral. And uh, I want to ask you the question. I mean, yes. doing Aretha's funeral, mm -hmm. putting all these people together, obviously, in addition to coordinating this, you have a relationship with her yourself because yes. she, she's she, come and sang for you. She, yes. I was there. Yes. Uh, at she Gospel. made my dream come true in 85 mm -hmm. and did three nights at the garden for me. Sold out. Was wonderful. The story I, I love telling everybody is that... Um, uh, I asked her to come and do only gospel, um, which she did. I, she, she's the only artist that I know who could do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only artist who could do secular and could come and do an all gospel set without doing any of their hits and the audience still be on their feet, you know, with a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she would leave the stage, audiences up cheering, and always come stage left. I'm always stage left. As you know, I'm always stage left. She mm -hmm. came, she come over to me and said, um, is that good, baby? Is there anything else you need? Every single night, every mm -hmm. single time. And then when I had her again um, in, in, um, in 2013, same 18,000 people screaming, Aretha, Aretha, right. comes over. 
I remember. Is everything all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, right. you know, you need anything else, baby? No, like, right. like you're you're the queen. Exactly. Are you kidding me? I remember because you. Like, have do me. you know who you're talking to? <laughs> I'm some little boy from Niles, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and the queen is talking to you like that. And the that. queen is talking to me like that. Ask me, do I need anything else? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I remember you. You have me sit next to Sissy Houston. Yes. And I was yes. sitting next to her. And as a matter of fact, right. walking with her, taking care right. of her. She, I remember very vividly when Aretha was on, she said, we got to get out of this dressing room. I said, why do we have to get out of this? She said, Riri is on. Yes, and, but the thing that really got me about it is <laughs> what she meant to so many other people right. and how she helped so many other people. Right, see, and that's the missing point, I think, of even, you know, the, for me, I, uh, she meant so much to so many people. She donated money to churches all over Detroit, but all over the country. You, every pastor's got a got a, 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 a story of how somebody just showed up with a five thousand dollar check, or a ten thousand dollar check when she heard the church doesn't have air conditioning, or the church that can't pay their light bill, they would just show up with a five thousand dollar check. You mm. know, so she was so involved with and the civil rights movement, all of those civil rights leaders. She, the, trust me, they all have gotten checks from her at one point or another. I'm saying she was much bigger than just Aretha Franklin, the secular right. singer. Do you think the world got that after watching the her services? Yes. The world got it. Twitter, the digital <laughs> people, they got what they wanted to get, but the world totally got it. Because the world, I'm hearing from people all over the world, South Africa, Brazil, um, Germany, uh, Australia, all of those folks are saying to me, oh my God, can I go to that church? When can I go to that church? Or is there a church you can recommend that I can go to? I want to hear music like that, like the choir. Mm. I want to I wanna hear, you know, um, speaking like that. It's so it energized me. This touched my soul. And some folks even, I even got some people saying, you know what? I got saved through the services. What do you suggest I do? Who do I go to? What should I do? You know what I mean? Mm. I, 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 I was a... Not a non-believer in God, but now I really believe in God. So the world definitely, and I would say the, the broader public at large definitely did. Um, and I think that there would be nothing that she would be more happy about than that. The thing that I, I often say that people forget that Aretha was a child of God. She was a child of God, and God always had his hands open to Aretha. And it just so happens that this time he was like, okay, baby, come home. But he is always, she was a child of of God, first and foremost. Gotta remember that. A I preacher's remember. daughter. That's right. And a very famous preacher's daughter yes. as well, at that. Yes. Hey, Chris Rock, thank, thank you for you. coming. No, it's a pleasure Clearing being up here. some stuff, letting yeah. people know, yes. putting the black church on stage, yes. sharing with yes. us here on Perspectives, giving us a little bit of this exclusive behind the scenes into the life, the legacy, and what actually went on behind Aretha Franklin's homegoing service. That about wraps it up for us here on Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime. I want to thank you for watching. Know the perspectives can be seen every week here on Bronx S Channel 67 and uh, continue to watch us. Take care. God bless. Share your perspective. It just might make a difference in somebody else's life. Take care. Don't forget to share your perspective which shines a light because it might make a difference in someone else's life. Relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make your move.